is um, is um, well, basically, it is a matter for public concern. It, it, inf it involves matters of Jimmy Savile style nature and matters of the hospital being oh, unclean. Gosh, in that case, you need to bring the police straight away. I'm afraid you, you can't ring your MP and report child abuse. You need to ring the police. It's not child abuse. It's, um, it's matters of a Jimmy Savile Sa style. Yes, right? Jimmy Savile did more than abuse children. Well, whatever. He did lots of things that were legal, and you need to ring the police, preferably straight away. I have signed a gagging order. This is my point, whether the gagging order gags me from um, calling the police or not. There is no gagging order that can uh, make you cover up a crime. So, uh, I'm afraid if you have a crime that you are alleged is happening, you need to ring the police. There's no gagging order on this earth that can prevent someone reporting criminal activity. Well, the further thing is, apparently, which public concern at work are going to I'm be... I'm sorry, Mr Patrick, you need to ring the police. Um, you've just told me that you know of crimes of a Jimmy Savile-style nature. This phone call should end and you should ring the police. Can I can I get your name? I all seem to have difficulty. Uh, I think I've had difficulty with yourself before. Um, uh, my name's Richard. Richard. Uh, this isn't difficulty. I, I'm asking. You've told me this is a crime. I have signed a gagging order, and I don't know whether the gagging order extends to the police or not. And there's more. There's more than there's more than that to it because if the if the if, if the chief executive has signed off the no gagging, gagging order, on the, the public concern at work are calling me tomorrow to confirm. Crime. Sorry. There's no gagging order on this earth. That absolves you or stops you reporting a crime. So let me just clarify. You are, I'm speaking to you, Andrew James, MP, Andrew Jones, MP's office. Is that correct? Yes. You are, and you represent Andrew Jones. I don't represent him, I work for him. You work for him. And you're telling me to call the police about... What I'm trying to tell you about. You're not yeah, asking you, for you details. It's a crime of a Jimmy Savile style nature, as you put it to me. Yes, it's been it's been described by four NHS trusts as a Jimmy Savile style nature when I've spoken to them. Yes, it is. Well, you need to ring the police because you report crimes to the police, and you know I should probably ring them actually. And well, you've told me you know of these. Well, it's entirely it's entirely up to you. I'm re I'm taping this telephone call to to clarify that you've said this. Well, you. You can clarify absolutely that if you know of crimes of those natures, you need to ring the police. Um, and it couldn't be clearer. So, you just said you were going to call the police? Well, I can do if you wish. It's up to you. No, no, it's not. It's You say you know these crimes. I don't know... These I'm trying to get clarification with because I've signed a gagging order whether they're going to do me for the 17,000, whether I'm going to get done. The public concern at work are calling me back tomorrow. As soon as I've got confirmation that the, uh, the, 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 the chief executive, if she has signed off the whistleblowing order, then she has committed a criminal offence. I'm on it. And I'm trying to tell you, the local MP... Please don't shout at me. It's you that's raising your goddamn voice at me and losing your temper, like you did last time when I called you. These are important things, and I'm trying to tell you about them, but I'm getting nowhere. I haven't raised my voice during this conversation. You have used anger in your voice and irritation. Like, I should know what goes on in terms of police. Four trusts have told me to call the police, but I've signed a gagging order. They set to break me if I if I open my mouth again. I am desperate. I've, I've, I'm public concern at work. I call them weekly so I can try and get this out into the public. And I'm calling my local MP's office today, which I dreaded, I might add. I dreaded calling you up because I get this every time I call, like I'm a goddamn hindrance, which is typical of the of the of the difference between MPs. And the, the people who have to speak to them on the lower ground, who are trying to get some help from you, and all we get is irritation, and you should have done this, and you should have done that, which is what you've just said to me. And I taped it, because I'm protecting myself. That's fine, Mr Patrick. Um, all I've said to you is that I will send you the forms for the Parliamentary Health Service Ombudsman. 
I'm you said to me, and I taped it, you, you're you going to turn around and call the police. Call up the police. Is there anything else I can help with? Yes, you can help me with the matter of the whistleblowing. Okay. Or the, my local MP can help me with the matter of the whistleblowing. What is the problem? The problem is, as I just told you, I told the hospital about what was going on. I called a confidential bullying hotline at the hospital and told them I was being bullied and furthermore that the person who was bullying me was also uh, mistreating, um, well, corpses, quite frankly. They called HR immediately. HR called my manager. My hours were immediately cancelled. I fought a 12-month battle for victimisation for making a protected disclosure. Right. I was paid out £17,000, but I got 8500 after tax. Now, the fact is, that person did not lose their job. I had multiple witnesses who were not interviewed. He has been reported since I left by a female member of staff. And I'm trying to get legal authorization one way or another to report it to the, well, it will be the uh, Parliamentary and Health Ombudsman and also the BBC, if possible, and the police. But the fact is, I am the one that remains at risk of the peanuts money that I got. And the P45, I might add, it was an exit, their own exit only. I'm trying to find out how I can deal with with that situation. Now, public concern at work have been most helpful. And they are calling tomorrow to, mo to find out, we are trying to find out whether it is a crime that a chief executive signs off a, 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 a gagging order. Then we've got to find out if she signed it off. If she signed it off, and it's a criminal offence, then she's committed a criminal offence. That's where it stands at present. I wasn't going to tell you, I was just telling you, calling you about the blood. But quite frankly, if I can get some help from my local MP in the matter, and its seriousness, which you say yourself, it's extremely serious, which I know it is. I've lost my job over it, and I liked my job. But I've lost it because I called a confidential bullying hotline. And I'm calling you now for some help, some advice. And I'm not getting very fast. So, yes, you can help me. That's the situation. How can you help me, please? I don't think we can. It's a legal dispute between you and your former employer. Um, you've gone to public concern at work, which is the, probably the correct course of action to take. Uh, you've taken legal advice. Um, we don't provide a legal service. Uh, I think probably you're going down the right route. You say public concern at work bring you back tomorrow. Um, I would wait and see what they have to say. That's what I was going to do. But the fact that you're telling me that my local MP cannot help me in this situation is not good enough. It's not good enough. Well, I'm afraid... Hello? Well, he's managed to cut himself off again. That's calling your local MP. Hello? I haven't cut, cut yourself off. Um, there are things that MPs obviously can help with and can't help with. We are not legal experts. We're not HR experts. You need to go to the correct people to help you with that, and it sounds like you have done. No, it hasn't, because I ain't got any help. You say they're ringing you back tomorrow. Yeah, they're calling me back tomorrow, but they're not legal help. They don't give me legal advice. You I can't get a solicitor. Hmm? You say you've already been to a solicitor. Yes, I've been. I've been to all sorts of solicitors. Uh, but the fact is, is it not? Is it not a legal but, and health but, ombudsman? But sentence, please, Mr. Patrick. Would you mind? Yeah, feel free. Well, just let me finish the sentence. An MP cannot give you legal advice any different or better, um, even if they were a solicitor, than the legal advice you've already had. How do you know you that? Take the advice of the person that's given you, uh, or not take the advice of the person that's been advising you legally. But we can't help anymore in respect to contractual obligations. 
that are made between you and a, an employer or a former employer. Even with whistleblowing? Even with things that are still going on in there? Hmm? Whistleblowing? I, I mean, I don't know what you're whistleblowing about, but you say it's crimes of a Jimmy Savile style nature. If you know of crimes, you need to ring the police. Okay, uh, I can see I'm wasting my time. All right, if you can send me that phone, then I'll call the. Um, I'll call the. I wish I'd done that in the first place. I dreaded this call. I, I knew this is how, how it turned out. Anyway, thank you so much. We'll send you the forms. Oh, fantastic! Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.